Hey guys, I'm going to do a real quick video uh, before baby decides it's playtime again. Um, I had a really good question posted on a previous video about whether or not um, the Evening Primrose Oil capsules and the Raspberry Leaf Tea ever worked for me uh, in the end as far as helping things progress with my pregnancy. Uh, and the short answer to that is no. <laughs> Uh, just simply no. Um, that being said, the evening primrose oil is, it's supposed to help soften your cervix, um, to help dilation occur, um, the cervix to soften easier, all that kind of stuff. I will say that whenever I would take the pills regularly, um, that when I would go into my next, uh, uh, appointment, OB appointment, that there would be a little bit more softening to the cervix or a little bit more dilating, but nothing ever really progressed. I was a centimeter dilated at 36 weeks and I was about a centimeter and a half when I went into labor at 40 weeks and six days. Um, so not really, that it really didn't help to, um, to dilate my cervix at all. Um, I took three capsules orally a day for about a month, um, and then as far as the tea went, I took, I think it was five to six caps a day is what my doctor said, um, and I did that for a month as well. The tea is not actually, I thought it was supposed to help you contract and go into labor. That's not what it does. It is supposed to tone your uterus so that your, uh, when you have contractions or Braxton Hicks, that, um, that they are, they are more efficient, that the whole, pur the whole purpose of having contractions is to help your, di your cervix dilate. Uh, and if you're just having Braxton Hicks here and there, then that's really not going to happen. So the point of the T is to help your uterus become stronger, more efficient, so that your cervix actually dilates and the, uh, laboring process can begin. Uh, so the tea didn't really do anything for me um, that I could sense. I would have a few extra Braxton Hicks here and there after drinking it, but um, nothing, uh, <clears throat> nothing huge. Um, I still, and even after all that, I thought, well, maybe that will at least shorten my labor. Maybe that will help things be a little bit easier. Um, I had had two previous C-sections. The first one was an emergency C-section. The second one was um, a uh, C-section because my baby was breech. With both of those, I never had a single contraction. So this was a whole new ball game for me. I had never had a contraction, didn't know what they felt like, uh, didn't know anything about really labor, um, even though I'd already had two kids. So I thought maybe this would help uh, speed things up a little bit maybe in the laboring department. And that it did not, unfortunately for me. I think that's all genetic. Uh, you know, there may be a little bit, some ladies that it helps a little bit more than others perhaps. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. But as far as I'm concerned, it did not help at all. I still had over 40 hours of labor and 37 of which were uh, mostly unmedicated. I had some Ambien and that was about it. Um, so I'm, you know, the tea and the, the evening primrose oil, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, I, I still suggest asking your doctor before, you know, doing any of those things just because you want a doctor's okay before you start taking any sort of herbal anything, um, especially when pregnant. Also, right before I had my baby, I read up on evening primrose oil and saw that there were some people who suggested that perhaps it it was not smart to use in VBACs because the whole purpose of the evening primrose oil is to soften the cervix and the tissue and whatnot and therefore it could soften the um, the previous cesarean scars. I don't know. Uh, my doctor never mentioned it to me. I never got a chance to ask her because I went into labor like that night or the night after. Um, and so I just, I was just throwing that out there because you might want to bring it up to your doctor. Um, 
uh, and and see what their opinion on that is. You don't want to do anything that's going to to uh, put you or your baby at risk. One last thing, um, talking about risks and such. I also tried castor oil at I think it was about 38 weeks, 39 weeks, something like that, and it did not work. It gave me horrible cramps, and that was about it. Um, I have heard with that since taking it, as you are putting the baby at risk in that you take, if you take it, the, you know, the whole point of castor oil really is to get things moving, you know, diarrhea, whatnot, um, which I did have, by the way, along with the cramps, um, and when you take that, it could be passed to the baby, the baby could have its first bowel movement in, um, while still in the womb, and that's extremely dangerous, so I have since taken that, heard horrible, horrible stories, and so, I won't be doing that again uh, for that main reason, also because it was disgusting. <laughs> anyway, so just a few little things there. I mean, honestly, women have taken castor oil for so long. My mom took castor oil, so it's really kind of what you decide and what your doctor decides. My doctor told me that it couldn't hurt, so I did. Um, or some people, you know, swear that it works. So it's just, like I said, it's kind of a personal choice. And um, but as far as the tea goes and the evening primrose oil, unless your doctor says otherwise, the only thing that I can see that doing is helping tone your uterus and soften your cervix. So that's my little um, that's my take on it. Uh, if anybody has anything to add to that, please post it because I'm always curious what other people have heard. Um, like I said about the whole castor oil thing, if I had heard that um, that it could cause meconium in the um, in the womb, then I probably I wouldn't have taken it. Um, so anyway, keep posting and keep asking questions. That was a great question, and I will talk to you guys later.